So guys, we know what news is dominating the world at the moment, all right? And um, it's everywhere, you can't get away from it. But um, as I was scrolling through the news last week, um, I found this really cool story. And it's funny because this is linked to an Irish man who I've uh, been reading a lot about the last few years. So the news was basically this. It was that the endurance exploration ship from way back when was finally discovered. All right. And like I said, this is linked to an Irish man who I think is very, very under acclaimed. He really is. Now, the picture on the screen that you see at the moment, if you are into portrait photography, this picture has probably come up for you sometime. All right. I mean, it did for me. I remember a couple of years ago, I was really into portrait photography. I started to look at the history of it. And then this picture came up and under the picture, it just said famous Irish explorer, Tom Crean. And I had never heard of this man. I had never, ever heard of this man in my life. And then I started to read about him. And I was just absolutely blown away by his story. His story is absolutely crazy. And like the title of this video is called, an Irish man with Sisu. In many ways, he's kind of like a, a Finnish person. You know, he's kind of quiet and resilient, just gets on with things. But I'm not gonna spoil it for you because his story, like you're gonna hear in this video, is just absolutely incredible. And if you want to read more about him, there's, there's a book that I have that I think is just absolutely fantastic. It's called An Unsung Hero. I'll leave a link in the description of this particular video and enjoy this video. Tom Crean served 27 years in some of the most brutal environments on the planet performed heroic and unbelievable feats of human strength and endurance, survived weeks and months in some of the most freezing, ferocious, unforgiving environments on earth, then received a chest full of medals for his heroism, exploration and scientific discovery, and participated in nearly every single major expedition from the heroic age of Antarctic exploration. Oh, but then he came home to Ireland, retired, and never talked about it, and never gloated about it either. Rugged and tough, athletic and gritty, with a tobacco pipe clenched between his teeth, Tom Crean was the toughest Antarctic explorer you've never heard of. He spent more days in Antarctica than both Ernest Shackleton and Robert Falcon Scott. His crewmates called him the Irish Giant for his sheer size and strength. And despite him being one of the most experienced Antarctic explorers the world had ever seen, he actually wasn't much for self-promotion and never earned proper international acclaim. Here are five things you need to know about this unsung hero of exploration. Tom Crean was born in 1877 in Ireland in a village of Annascowl on the western side of Ireland. One of ten siblings, Crean attended Catholic school in a poverty-stricken community until the age of 12 when he dropped out to work on his family's farm. The stint was short-lived because only three years later he volunteered for the Royal Navy. He was so young he had to lie about his age to adventure out the sea. He eventually rose to the rank of petty officer after eight years in Queen Victoria's fleet. Between 1901 and 1904, Crean journeyed as a crew member of Captain Robert Falcon Scott's Discovery Expedition. Scott was one of the most famous polar explorers in the world and to be a part of his crew meant that one was a proven asset to the team. The team consisted of a who's who of frozen adventurers, including Ernest Shackleton, Frank Wilde, William Lashley and Edward Wilson. Tom Crean participated in five major voyages with the Discovery and earned the crew's respect for his brute strength in man-hauling equipment through the unknown territory and at minus 58 degrees where no human had ever explored before. 
Following the Discovery expedition, Scott recruited Crean as his expert sledger and pony handler for the Terra Nova expedition beginning in 1910. This meant he was in charge of the back-breaking job of hauling the equipment as well as keeping the ponies healthy on their voyage. Their mission was to lay claim to the South Pole and Crean hauled tons of supplies across the ice to establish a supply depot along the route. Crean, Apsley, Cherry Garrard and Henry Bowers narrowly escaped certain death after pitching tents on an unstable section of ice. The quiet night turned into chaos as the ice began to break beneath them and soon one of their ponies disappeared below in the dark icy water. Their ice flow separated from their equipment but Crean acted quickly jumping from ice flow to ice flow while a pod of orcas splashed and stalked his every move. He scaled an icy cliff and walked across the barrier to get help. In November 1911, the journey to the South Pole commenced and consisted of three stages, 400 miles across the barrier, 120 miles up a heavily crevassed glacier and 350 miles to the South Pole. Crean had made it all the way to the final leg before reaching the pole when he, Bill Lashley and Teddy Evans were ordered to go back mid-January 1912. On their 730-mile return trip, Teddy Evans developed snow blindness, along with a serious case of scurvy. By February, he couldn't even walk without support. Evans told Lashley and Crean to leave him behind, but the pair refused to abandon him. Pulling their equipment and Evans on a makeshift bed, they made it to within 35 miles of Hut Point, a four or five day journey away to get help. At the pace they were travelling, they wouldn't make it in time to save Evans' life. So instead, Lashley chose to erect a tent and stay behind with Evans, while Crean went forward alone and somehow reached the camp in a mere 18 hours. So it fell to myself to do the 30 miles for help, and only a couple of biscuits and a stick of chocolate to do it, Crean recalled. Well, sir... I was very weak when I reached the hut, Crean added. Ultimately, a dog team returned for Evans and Lashley before a blizzard could seal their fate. Although he saved the lives of these two men, in late October, Crean joined a search party for the remainder of his missing team who hadn't returned from the South Pole. He received the Albert Medal for bravery. Believe it or not, Tom Crean spent more time in Antarctica than both Shackleton and Scott. Despite it being less than a year since he had returned from the icy shelf, he accepted Shackleton's offer to board the Endurance for the Imperial Transantarctic Expedition. From 1914 to 1916, Crean was involved every step of the way, including filling a role as Puppy Guardian for the sled dogs. The four puppies were named Roger, Toby, Nell and Nelson. Sadly, the 69 Inuit dogs on the Endurance Expedition either died by disease or were shot. Three brutal Antarctic expeditions, personally saving the lives of 28 crew members and the unsung hero of the greatest survival story in the world, Tom Crean returned to Ireland, his childhood village, to start the South Pole Inn. He never gloated about his exploits to anyone. He put his medals and his sword away in a box in a wardrobe and that was that. He was a very humble man, said his daughter, Eileen Crean. The remaining 20 years of Crean's life were spent at the South Pole Inn. He only told the stories to his curious children. He mostly sat in the corner, reading the newspaper, while his wife, Nell, ran the pub. His pint of choice was Guinness, and the beer maker later immortalised his legacy in an epic ad dedicated to his memory. Tom Crean passed away in 1938 at 61 years of age.
this. Oh, 